Today, uh, we mark a historic moment. The first ever leaders summit between the United States, Japan, and the Philippines. And it's truly an honor to have you both here as we begin this new era of a partnership. As you've heard me say before, a great deal of history in our world will be written in the Indo-Pacific over the coming years. And the three, um, as the three allies, three steadfast partners, and three proud democracies representing a half a billion people, today we commit to writing that story in the future together. We're deepening our maritime and security ties. This is something I know you've discussed with Vice President Harris during her travel to the Indo-Pacific. And I want to be clear, the United States, the United States defense commitments to Japan and to the Philippines are ironclad. They're ironclad. Uh, and we do know the New York Times is reporting that several Israeli officials did confirm to them that they were behind the attack. And as we heard, Iran livid. They have promised retaliation. And we heard an equally strong response from U.S. President Joe Biden. Here's what he had to say uh, as he met with his Japanese counterpart in Washington yesterday. We also want to address the Iranian threat to launch a significant, they're threatening to launch a significant attack on Israel. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Let me say it again, ironclad. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. Now, returning to the Middle East now, and the U.S. president has told Iran not to attack Israel. President Biden has said that the U.S.'s commitment to Israel's security is ironclad amid concern that Tehran could strike within days. Uh, well, clad, then, is the word used by the U.S. President Joe Biden as he expressed unwavering support for Israel, and he warned as well that Iran is threatening to launch a significant attack. And celebrated his re-election with a victory speech where he also issued a stark warning to world powers. Putin spoke about a potential World War III if the conflict in Ukraine escalates into a direct confrontation between Russia and NATO forces. Putin's words come as a blunt reminder of how swiftly the biggest European conflict since World War II could escalate. Here's a report. I think that everything is possible in the modern world, but I have already said and it is clear to everyone that this will be one step away from the full-scale Third World War. I think that hardly anyone is interested in this. A chilling warning raising the spectre of a nuclear confrontation between Russia and the US-led NATO alliance. The very thought sends shivers down the spine. The Russian president's words may be aimed at NATO, but its impact will most certainly be global. Temperatures are rising fast. The Ukraine war has triggered the deepest crisis in Russia-West relations since the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. Putin has often warned of the risks of a nuclear war, but says he never felt the need to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. That has not stopped him, however, from warning the West on crossing red lines. On the other hand, the Western leaders are no less provocative. France's President Emmanuel Macron has said sending Western troops to Ukraine should not be ruled out. With Putin cementing his grip on power and starting a new six-year innings, in the Ukrainian capital, the mood is grim. We have to be on guard, especially the big cities, where at present it is quiet. But at any moment, they can start something big, start bombing. 
And we begin with the Israeli government deciding how to respond to the biggest drone and missile attack in history. As Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, Israel's leaders are considering their options while allies like the U.S. are trying to restrain Israel's military response. Reuters is reporting that Turkey acted as a mediator between Iran and the U.S. It said Iran informed Turkey in advance of the operation and Washington told Tehran that any action it took had to be, quote, within certain limits. After the attack, President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu talked by phone. Biden reportedly told Netanyahu, you got a win, take a win, and urged him to carefully think through the consequences of any retaliation. He also said the U.S. won't participate in any strike against Iran. The president's been very clear. We don't seek a war with Iran. We're not looking for escalation here. We will continue to help Israel defend itself. The Gentile rulership of the Third Kingdom was the Greeks. Verse 40, And the fourth kingdom of the Gentiles shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it, this fourth kingdom, break in pieces and bruise other nations. This is the legs of iron. The Gentile rulership of the fourth kingdom are the Romans. Verse 41. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom, this Gentile kingdom, shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, this kingdom, shall mingle themselves with the children of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And this is the feet and toes. This Gentile rulership is the fourth kingdom that is revived Rome, the revived Roman Empire. And the United Snakes of America is the chief Edomite, the chief ruler, the military might on the earth. Verse 44, and in the days of these kings, these Gentile kings, and this specifically the revived Roman Empire, shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, all these Gentile kingdoms, all these former kingdoms that are mixed together today in this present revived Roman Empire, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great power hath made known to the king of Babylon what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Israelites, we have to prepare to meet our power. Yahweh Bahashem Yahusha.
All praises to the Most High Yahweh. Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Most High Yahweh. Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Most High Yahweh. Ba Hashem 